Hi everyone, welcome. This is Ete Girlar. Today I will compare two pastel mats that are very popular. The first one is Claire Fontaine and the second one is a little bit bigger. So this is Canson Metant. We will see at the end of this video which one holds more pastel, which one you can layer more with and also which one is more budget friendly. Let's look. I want to start with Metant. So this is Canson Metant pastel mat and this is an earlier drawing I did with this paper. What I don't like about this paper is that you can see that texture is showing too much and I don't want to see the tooth when I'm drawing realistic portraits. The color choices are great. I really like these earth colors and you can also buy different assorted colors. It's 12 by 16 and what I have is 160 grams which is not much and here you see that I drawing with both pen pastels and pastel pencils on this paper. The first thing I realized about this paper, it was not holding my pen pastels as much as I hope it would have. It was holding my first layer well, although I feel like the brown the paper color was showing underneath that skin tone. When I tried to blend with my fingers, it gave a good result, but when I try with my Q-tip, you can see that it's removing the underlying layer. I'm trying to make a new layer not removing the already existing layer the same thing with the sponge too look and you can see that it's removing the underlying layer here so this was a challenging part for me especially because i'm so used to working with the other paper and here you can see that my fingers are working well um, but i cannot always blend with my fingers right it's not going to give exact color transition that i'm looking for one thing that i also want to show you the blending stump so the blending stump worked well with the darker color when it comes to white the white disappeared i mean where is my lighter tone there now <laughs> like so that was not successful also you can see that when i blend with my blending stump again it's removing the underlying layer and it doesn't look good so i found my solution tapping on this pastels with my q-tip gently was the best way to blend them without removing the underlying layer and also this way i kept the color and the vibrancy of the pastel that i had just applied i have another thing to say while i'm adding my details i am not having any trouble because i realized i think this paper works with pastel pencils much better than pen pastels. So I'm wondering how this paper would perform with stick pastels that we often use as well. Again, when I apply my pastel pencils, they look vibrant and they don't show the tooth of the paper as much. So I'm thinking that that's perfect for my realistic portraits, but I'm afraid what's gonna happen when I blend. And yes, what happens is that vibrancy disappears when I blend with cut and tips. This is one thing I did not like about this paper. If I don't blend, yes, it looks great. But once I blend, it loses its vibrancy and I'm having the risk of removing the layer and the underlying layer will show. So I'm gonna test out one more time. So I added all these layers and now I'm gently blending them with my cut and tip. You can see how the color is changing. It's getting much lighter and pale as I blend. I feel like some of the structures already disappear while I'm blending and you can see the Q-tip strokes as I blend. Mm, I didn't like it that much. For example, here there's a highlighted area and I added all my white which is looking great and I just want to blend it and I want it to stay white but even when I work with my blending stump I can see that it's just not giving the same effect. So the eye details again were easy and I think the paper showed the vibrancy of my colors very well because I was not blending them and when I use it just as they are it was perfect no problem there but it doesn't have as much tooth as other papers that I'm using normally so I'm also hesitating to erase anything because then it's going to damage the tooth meaning it's going to flatten out the tooth so that your pastel will not be able to hold on to anything so you won't be able to layer guys look I'm just trying to add the highlights here but because the tooth already has been filled up with pastels it's harder for me to add those whites and the, the white pastel is not not really showing here. I want to soften out this line so I use my q-tip and look 
the paper is showing again the brown paper so probably it is good to use white paper if you're going to work on a portrait or a skin color here i'm adding the eyelashes i really didn't have any problem adding the eyelashes um, and it was just normal application for me i added the hair and also some of the eyebrows and in overall guys it was a little bit difficult for me i spent i think way too much time on creating this piece which would have taken me much shorter if i use clear fontaine i have a idea like that so now let's talk about clear fontaine clear fontaine pastel mat has the structure as if it's a sandpaper a very fine sandpaper it has a lot of tooth i can feel it and what i like is this little transparent paper in between the pages so i can use that for my initial drafts or to keep my pastel paintings separately without getting them dirty i'm using exactly the same materials here the same pen pastels same pastel pencils and the paper is brown and you can see that under the skin tone you don't see that brown at all and even when I blend it's only blending the pastels it's just not removing the underlying layer at all it's just working on the current layer it's perfectly blending them and I'm not having any issue of let's say leaving any strokes uh, from those applications of the q-tip and here after i drew with my pastel pencils i am blending all these black spots and look how beautifully they are blending into each other and i don't see any kind of underlying layer getting removed or any kind of q-tip strokes that i experienced in canson mitant or canson cancel i don't know cancel <laughs> so q-tips are great for this paper i highly recommend you to blend like this and look how many applications i did on the nose how many applications i'm going to make on the lips it doesn't matter i can keep going and going and going it's still vibrant it's still workable and i really love this freedom on this paper guys I can go back, layer more. If I don't like it, I can change more, go back, add more, and no problem at all. It's just perfect. The very same paper I used here with Claire Fontaine Pastel Matte, and you can see my details are showing much better here. Look at the hair details. I couldn't give that on the eye detail very much. And here, look, I'm gonna make so many layers again on the lips and on the chin area on the jaw and the cheeks and you see that it keeps getting better and better it's holding onto my layers very well so obviously this is a much more high quality paper how much are they so price wise let's compare them clear fontaine pastel matte is because of his quality of course it's much more expensive if you're looking for 12 by 16 12 of them are 44 dollars on amazon 64 dollars on blick art materials right now if you look at canson mitand it's 20 dollars for the same size 24 sheets so it's much much cheaper guys so what do you think is it worth the price please share in the comments my personal opinion is yes it's worth the price especially if you are doing commissions working with Claire Fontaine paper is amazing for me as an artist I really enjoy creating art with this paper the other paper though it challenged me a lot I felt like disappointed most of the time did the art turn out well yes it did but it could be better if you're a beginner in pastels please watch my video on the right if you want to learn the basics I'll see you there bye